HR is a great example because it's very important, critical content. There's a lot of sensitive data involved. Uh, and HR systems are a, a very uh, valuable market. Uh, so a lot of smaller companies really don't want to invest in an HR system immediately uh, because they don't think it's, it's necessary up to a certain point. And a lot of HR systems are either tailored to a market or they're tailored to a specific uh, amount of employees or they just might be too expensive for where you're at. So AODOCs really provide something that can scale in both directions uh, for a company, but at, at its core, it's going to allow you to manage the content's life cycle uh, as, as far up to 100% as possible. Because obviously 100% of the content life cycle means that content's gonna be in 100% compliance at all times. So in our scenario, we're going to be looking at an onboarding scenario. So we're going to be generating the content. And if we're generating the content, we're managing it 100%. But if you scale and you move to, you know, let's say you're, you're really successful and you've, you want to make an investment in Workday, you know, our, our focus shifts then to capturing content and data out of that system. So we're managing not quite 100% of it, but as much as possible. And then being able to integrate with Gmail to capture content from email as well. Again, understanding what those capture points are and running the content through its life cycle. And when I say life cycle, mainly use that as a cue to the whole concept of retention and disposition. So in HR, those actions are going to be typically a termination date. So what is that? You know, what is your policy going to be? Is it termination date plus 10 year plus seven years? And then you can get rid of the records so you're no longer liable for them. So that's a reference there. So again, if we're able to establish these type of processes and these types of requirements early on, it's going to make sure that you're in compliance as you grow, as you scale. So in our scenario, we've got a company called Atlantic Labs. They're a life sciences startup. It's growing at a very fast pace. They need to onboard new hires. They want it to be repeatable. They want to make sure that all of this sensitive employee content and data is properly managed. So here, uh, this is actually a really great example of scaling because this demo environment that we're going to show in a second actually has scaled since we originally built it. So our HR use cases extend from performance reviews to PTO requests to hiring, which is uh, talent management. So managing a, a talent network, going through the hiring process, and then obviously onboarding. So onboarding should be the focus. When we originally built this demo, it was focused on generating tasks in parallel. So assigning tasks to different individuals within the organization and running them through completion. But for our DocuSign integration, we wanted to embed that into the process and also generate the employee documents and grab those signatures and make sure again that we're, we're controlling 100% of the content. So here, when we do a new hire, we're gonna go ahead and generate three, three documents, a handbook acknowledgement, a benefits acknowledgement, and a W4. So uh, two Google Docs and one PDF. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm gonna jump into my persona, Sam. So Sam's a part of the HR team. We're in our AODocs interface. Like I said, we're 100% integrated with G Suite. We live on top of Google Drive and we leverage a concept of storage accounts that make sure that the content always belongs to the organization. So it doesn't belong to the individual that creates something inside the Drive environment. It belongs to your organization. So that's gonna assist with turnover. And again, it's gonna assist with maintaining the compliance of that document at all times. Uh, something that got mentioned earlier was Insight. So AODocs also takes advantage of a hook into BigQuery. So you can actually generate reports, insights, based on your content, your workflows that you're managing and things like that. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and jump into a view and we're going to look at our new employees. So here's a view where we've got content, we've got new employees. I could go ahead and take a workflow task here to start an onboarding process. Maybe this got generated out of the talent management system or maybe it got initiated from another related AODOX library. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and walk through the new employee creation. So in this case, we've got mandatory properties that have to be captured. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring Mary Adams on board. Her title is gonna be HR admin. We're gonna go ahead and bring her email in. IT's already given her an email so we can pull from the G Suite Global Directory. In this case, we know the HR manager at all times is gonna be Sam, so we're gonna pre-fill that data so a user doesn't have to. But in this case, the business manager is also Sam, the user I'm logged in at. It's an internal contract, we pre-filled that information as well. And we're gonna go ahead and bring her into the HR department with an expected arrival date of the 15th. So we're able to customize this metadata to be in line with enterprise information, right? Your accounting metadata is going to be different from your HR. Your operational metadata might be different from marketing. Sales might be different than uh, from procurement, etc. 
So when I click save here, we want it to be a very streamlined user experience. So we want to eliminate to the highest extent, you know, duplication of data entry. So in this case, we automatically generate a file naming convention, and now we have this data record. So we can have attachments, but in this case, we're purely using this as an employee record. I've got documentation, onboarding process, departure process, essentially everything that lives within our HR group within AODocs. Here, I wanna start the onboarding process. So I can make a comment here with each of my work to workflow transitions. So we can have full audit log, not only on the, on the content, but also the processes themselves. So maintaining a full enterprise grade audit log over all the activities that take place in the environment across the AODocs, uh, the, across the AODocs domain. So what we're doing now is, again, we want to implement processes that scale. So here we've got a baseline that's been established. When I onboard a new employee, we want to do a few things, and we're going to do them in parallel so I don't have to go one by one. So we generate the employee documentation. So we've got Mary Adams' handbook acknowledgement, benefits acknowledgement, W4. We also have the onboarding processes. So we're going to be able to kick off all of these things in parallel and assign them to the people that they need to be assigned to. So in this case, we're going to jump into the handbook acknowledgement. Uh, we broke the tasks here into one by one for demo purposes, but all could go out to Mary at once. And here we've got a Google Doc. So something's something that is highly collaborative by nature, but we're in HR. This needs to be targeted collaboration for our HR group. So we can integrate with your Google groups to give targeted collaboration and targeted visibility to these documents. So in this state, until I click start task, Mary is not even going to have visibility to it. And once it goes through the process, Mary's going to be the only one that sees her documents in uh, addition to the HR group. So when I click start task, we are now going to hand this document off to DocuSign. So in this scenario, we've actually embedded DocuSign into the process. And we're going to be able to take advantage of those DocuSign functionalities that exist. So do we want to take advantage of freeform signature, which is what we'll be doing in this scenario? Do we want to take advantage of sequential signature? Do we want to be able to take advantage of placeholders for signatures, things like that? So now we're going to move over from Sam to Mary. And so what we're getting here with Mary is a couple emails that have been automatically generated. So we've got a lovely little welcome email from Mary. Welcome to the team. We're excited to have you. It links to the document that links to, links to the onboarding process. And then we've also got the DocuSign email. So we just saw the DocuSign demo. It's going to be that same experience. And so here's an example of that freeform signature process. And this is that Google Doc that we managed in AODocs and went ahead and passed over. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply Mary's signature to the document. So I'm gonna adopt and sign here. I'm gonna bring in the date sign and I'm gonna grab my name. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this document. So since we're able to integrate with Gmail through the capacity of notifications, we're also able to do things like workflow notifications. So if someone needs to approve something via email, they can take that action and they can have visibility of documents and attachments, but we're going to be managing a centralized copy. We're not creating duplicates to facilitate email notification and visibility back into the process. So what we're going to do now with our DocuSign integration is it's actually going to be embedded into the process to where it automatically hands it back to the document of record. So in this scenario, if I go to my view that has my employee documentation, I'm going to have those three documents that we created. So there's that W-4, there's the benefits acknowledgement that we haven't sent out to Mary yet, and then here's that handbook acknowledgement. I could go over and sort by workflow state so I can monitor productivity and see where things are living within their cycle. And in this case, I can go into this handbook, and here you'll see that the document's been signed. I've got my transition history. I've got comment history of comments that happened on the workflow. I've got my metadata here. I've got my signed copy that came back to us from DocuSign, so we can see that, ex that executed copy. And in this case, again, we're managing those permissions. We're managing who has visibility, who has access, who can do what. So there's no more workflow actions available. Sam can't go in and edit or manipulate this content because it's in a controlled state. And then same thing goes for our draft version of the Google Doc. So it's still in a view-only state, even though Sam's a part of the HR group. So we're gonna give the right level of visibility, the right level of collaboration, and we're gonna give people the ability to go in and search. So full text search, metadata search, to be able to find things, kick off new process. Again, automate as much as possible, include as much structure in the possible, and scale it in whatever direction you need to go as an organization. So those are the types of things that we're gonna be able to focus on here in this specific use case. So 
you know, as I kind of tie things up and we, we hand it back over to Thorsten, we really want to focus on easing, reducing, and eliminating technology decisions. If you establish, the, establish those baseline applications, so those core business applications, Google Cloud, DocuSign, AODocs, you're going to be able to spread that horizontally across your enterprise at a small state, at a medium state, and then when you guys are up to an enterprise of 5,000 plus global customers, those decisions to get to that end result are gonna be much easier because you've got these core components that move very well horizontally and vertically within your business as it touches customers and as it maintains internal operations.